everyone and welcome to today's perfect search training on how to set up event tracking for Google Analytics within Google Tag Manager. Before we jump into specifics, it is important to understand what event tracking even is. In short, it is critical to creating a more wholesome view of your SEO efforts to determine how well you're performing or not. By setting up micro or macro conversion event tracking, you are able to track beyond just organic visits, organic sessions, or a specific rank position of a keyword. Some conversion examples that you can set up for event tracking can include the number of button clicks that a call to action receives, the number of submissions or form fillouts an application gets, or the amount of page visits on one specific page. These are again just examples and there are a lot more options in terms of building out event tracking within Google Tag Manager. So how do you set up a goal to track? So once you identify the action you wanna track, like we mentioned earlier, whether that's a button click, a page visit, a form fill out, you wanna make sure to note of every single button or area on the site where a user could complete that goal. For example, if you are tracking a button, you wanna make sure you are aware of everywhere on the website that that button exists. So if it is on the Contact Us page and in the top navigation or also in the footer, you wanna make sure to note of that and understand is it only on specific pages or all pages. There are also a few distinct pieces that you'll need to set up in order to correctly set up an event in Google Tag Manager otherwise known as GTM, those being a trigger and an event. So first, when you create a trigger, you're specifying a specific set of criteria so that whenever an, an action fulfills those criteria types, the trigger activates. So for example, if you specify A and B to happen and then the trigger occurs, whenever A and B occur, the trigger is set. So then once that trigger is activated, you can tie it to an event and it will register whenever a user takes actions that fulfill the criteria of your trigger. So now you have the goal in mind that you wanna set up and you're ready to do so in Google Tag Manager. The first item to take care of is variables. So before you set up that trigger that we were discussing, you should navigate to the variables section within Google Tag Manager you can see a few screenshots there on the right-hand side. Along the left-hand sidebar, you can see variables located just under triggers and above folders. So variables is a list of distinct elements you can use to set up the trigger. So select the configure button and check all of the click options within the configure built-in variables menu. Once those are all selected, you'll also want to include your own Google Analytics account details within the user defined variables section of variables. So on that right hand side, the lower screenshots, you can see that we have included Google Analytics settings and then under tracking ID, we have included that specific UA tracking code to let Google Tag Manager know that this will be tied to a specific Google Analytics account. So now that you have the variable set up, you'll want to navigate to the trigger section of GTM and select the new button. So once you do that, this will bring up a list of different trigger types to choose from. There are a fair amount, but typically in most cases, you'll want to create a click goal. When doing so, there are gonna be two options, either click all elements or click just links. So the difference between those are pretty much exactly what they sound like. One allows you to track clicks onto any element on the entire website, while the other only allows you to track clicks on links. We recommend you click all elements. Now, once you do that, you can then choose whether the trigger fires on all clicks or some clicks. And since we don't just want to track anytime anyone clicks anywhere on the website, you're going to want to do some clicks. Then you'll see options for specific circumstances that would signify the trigger. 
So this is done by creating a list of conditions that correspond to the variables that we activated earlier. So you need to specify the criteria that correspond to the specific elements that you want to track. So what does this mean? We have an example here of someone wanting to track the order now button in the header of an example website. So we have selected click all elements this trigger will fire on some clicks, and you can see that screenshot on the right-hand side there. And then we want to give specific conditions of when this will fire. So by using the inspect tool on your website, if you right-click and click inspect, you can see that the button within the code has a CSS styling class of BTN, BTN primary. So button, button primary and the text of that button says order now. So all conversion buttons on the website share that BTN, BTN primary styling. So if you use that as the sole condition for the trigger, then the trigger will end up tracking clicks on buttons other than those that are for order now specifically. So to avoid this confusion and possibly track the goal and the event wrong, you would want to have two conditions to create our trigger. So again, referencing that screenshot there, we have the click classes condition. Anytime the button contains a class of BTN, BTM primary, but then we also have that click text. So the text on the button itself reads order now. So it's telling Google Tag Manager to fire this trigger anytime both of those conditions are true. So we have our variable set, we just set up our triggers, now it's on to tags. So now you want to navigate to the tags section of Tag Manager and select new once again. For the tag type, you're going to select universal analytics and you'll input the tracking ID of the appropriate analytics account, similar to what we did in our variables. And then you'll set the track type to event. So then you'll be asked to define four different aspects of your event goal, those being category, action, label, and value. Only category and action are required, but if you want, you can fill out the others. Typically, as an agency, we only fill out category and action. So what do you put in those fields? What you put in there doesn't matter. You can really input anything you want. The only thing is that it has to match exactly the way you configure it within your Google Analytics goals. If you type it even slightly different, it will not fire correctly and the data will not be fed into Google Analytics. So if you use homepage top navigation as the category and action clicks, you have to make sure you're also labeling it that within Google Analytics when you're setting up that goal, which we'll get to in a moment. So here we have some more specific screenshots for you all to reference. So you set the trigger for the event as the trigger you just created. So in this example, we have our event, the category we put as example, and the action order now. And then you select that trigger that we just created previously within the triggers to make sure it matches and each tag has a corresponding trigger and vice versa. So. We have our variable, our trigger, and our tag. We are almost there. Now you want to configure this event in Google Analytics itself. Up until this point, we've been building this out in Google Tag Manager. Now it's time to head to GA. So once you are in the correct property of Google Analytics, you're looking at your website data, you're going to navigate to the admin section of GA, select goals, and then select new goal. Since we're setting up event tracking in this example, you'll select event as the goal type, and you will again be asked to define those four different aspects of your event goal, category, action, label, and value. As we previously said, only category and action are required, but you can fill out the others if you wish. The main most important aspect being that whatever you input here in GA matches exactly what you selected when you were building that out in Google Tag Manager. So once again, on the right-hand screenshot, you can see that we've selected event, and then we've once again made the category equal to example and the action equal to order now. 
Lastly, to make sure that all of this is firing correctly, you're going to navigate to the real-time event section of Google Analytics and submit a test event to ensure that it is tracking correctly. This will come in just like it sounds in real time. So if you are on your website and you click that order now button, it should come in through the real time events and you'll see that it's firing correctly. And that's everything we have for today's Google Tag Manager training. Of course, there are tons and tons of different goals that you can set up. So feel free to play around in Google Tag Manager. See what other types of goals you can create. Um, you, utilize the preview section, the workspace within GTM, so you don't have to push any goals live and have to use the real-time data to make sure they're okay. This can absolutely be something that you play around with for a long time and get to know within the platform itself before you actually decide which goals you want to finalize and create in Google Analytics. Hope this helped and thank you so much.